God, I know you have put it in his heart. And I pray that you'll be able to deliver it in an incredible way. And also, God, I pray for our hearts. Because we do not want only knowledge. We want revelation. And I really pray that your Holy Spirit will enlighten our understanding. In Jesus' name, we will be able to grasp. And it is going to dwell deep in our hearts. And it will bring a transformation. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we honor you, God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, uh, I want to start today this message asking a question. Do you remember the day that you met Jesus for the first time when you invited him to be the Lord of your life, to be in control of your life? The day that you invited him to be the king of your life. Do you remember the day, the year, the time? 37 years ago, I met Jesus. Jesus met me and called me to be his servant. On the 10th of August, 1986, I gave my life to Jesus. And uh, from that day, lots of things changed. But I'm not satisfied. I want to go deeper and deeper in my relationship with him. I desire to be more like him every single day. Today, our message for, for us is about come back to, the, to our first love. Based in Revelation 2, from 1 to 7. And I would like to invite you to read together this passage of Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Let's go together. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate the wicked man that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the hate from which you have fallen. Repent and do these things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Wow, it's powerful words. Do you remember when something started to change? Do you remember your passion for the first days of your Christian journey? Do you remember when something starts to be cold and you start to lose heart, passion, desire? I remember when I became Christian. I was in the church day and night. 
Every day of the week, I was involved with church activities. Prayer meetings, I never lose one. I never lost one. I was there. The services during the week, in the weekend, I was there. On some days after noon, I was doing evangelism, preaching the bus station for people that was arriving in there. And all the time, I read in my Bible from the beginning to the end in six months. I was so passionate for Jesus. And I was happy all the time to be part of every single activity in the church. Come back to our first love. The good is ever the enemy of the best. The good is ever the enemy of the best. For sure, as a Christian, we always can be better in our relationship with God and with one another. We can improve every single day. We can, we can be more passionate for Jesus. We can desire Him more than anything else. We can give ourselves completely to Him and put Him first in our lives, in everything that we do. We know that the enemy try to stop us. Always he tried to stop us to be the person that Jesus called us to be. And to get his objective, he used all kinds of tactics to entangle us in his traps. He tried to introduce false doctrine into the church. Where it doesn't work, he introduced division. Knowing that a house divided against itself cannot stand. He can use lots of things like gossip, jealousies, suspicions, and pride. He takes the eyes of the person from God and his commandments and calls them instead to focus on earthly things which have no eternal value. And it's happening very softly. And sometimes you don't see the way that the enemy is, try, is take us little by little from the presence of God, from the passion for Jesus, from the desire to read the Bible and apply the word of God in our own lives to change us to become more like Jesus. Because the enemy knows that you never go to worship him, but he try you to, to, to stop you to worship God. And if he does it, he gets it, he'll be happy. And so many of us, slowly but surely, you are losing passion. And you are involved in so much with earthly things. The enemy tries always something to distract us and take our eyes and heart from Jesus. And instead of maintaining a hot passion for Christ uh, and his kingdom, a deep love for him, we can lose our passion. And uh, in these days, we have the medium that takes so much time of us. Instead, to spend the time, read our Bible and be passionate for Jesus and give our being for him, we are looking in the internet, in the Facebook, whatever, to see how many likes we got. If the people saw what you post there, and our heart is not completely to Jesus. The church of Ephesus show us why so many churches today are in decline. And this is not only a picture for church, but for each one of us. Maybe you are allowing the good to replace the best in our spiritual lives. 
We can improve, brothers and sisters. We can be more close to Jesus. We can decide for him. We can put him first in our life and be passionate and say yes, 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 always to Jesus. And say no for this world. We need to remind ourselves that God is with us. And he is working in this place. And he doesn't want us to be like the church of Ephesus in the matter of love. He wants us to be people that really loves him. Really love him and put him first in our lives. Between an invitation to go for somewhere, to visit some friends, or come to church, what do you choose? We can measure the passion that you have for Jesus, guys. Brothers and sisters, we can measure the passion that you have for Jesus. When we choose things that bring us pleasure, joy. For our flashes. I will not condemn anyone. You are free to do whatever you want to do. I mean, talking about our deep love for Jesus, our first love. The church of Ephesus had so many positive aspect, aspects, like the commitment to teach to teach the truth. They knew who they were in Christ, how to walk with Jesus, and how to engage in the spiritual warfare. The problem was not that they lacked perseverance. The church of Ephesus faced one of the most difficult times in all of Christian history. Beginning in 54 AD, with the emperor Nero. The persecution was huge. There was a widespread persecution of Christians. The Ephesian church had refused to bow the knees to Caesar and had stood firm in the midst of persecution. The church of Ephesus was not idle. On the contrary, they were very busy working for the Lord. Their calendar was full. They looked at a strong stand against the heresy. They were well grounded in the world. But there is something that we need to understand. Mere works are not enough to please the Lord. They did it so good. They worked so hard. They stand against heresy, against the people that come to do something wrong in the church. They say, no way in this place. But the big job, the work that they did wasn't enough to please God. What Jesus wants is a heart that is changed. It's a teachable heart that is available to change every single day and be more passionate for him. As we see in verse 4, but I have this against you, that you have lost your first love. This is what matters for Jesus. It's not how much you will do. And sometimes you will do lots without him. We need to do things with him. In a deep relationship with him. In a deep intimacy with him. To hear his voice. To hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And move on that commandment. On that direction. But sometimes you do lots by our own strength. And we become tired. And nothing happens. Jesus advised them, the church of Ephesus, to return to the first love, to keep him first in their hearts. They had started out strong, 
but slowly things had begun to change. A generation had come and gone since Apostle Paul had preached to them. Maybe it was around 20 years later, after Paul preached the gospel for them, they start to change. They start to become cold. The passion is gone. While they had remained faithful to the word of God, they were aligning with God's heart. But something was lacking. They had lost the passion, the fervor for Christ. The passionate love that had motivated them and burning within their hearts had given way to a mechanical, ritualistic form of service that lacked enthusiasm and zeal. Sometimes we do lots of things, but it's like a mechanical, without passion, without deep connection with God. What happens when we lose our first love? What happens when we, the passion that we had for Christ is replaced by a mechanical form of Christianity that contains all the external but lacks the internal passion that moves us to love Jesus over everything? What happens when you lose our first love? When you lose our first love, we become infatuated with knowledge instead of holiness. Personal holiness is no longer our priority when you lose our first love. We become convinced that knowledge is what makes us holy. I know God, I know the Bible, I'm in the church, I'm holy. What we know becomes more important than what we are. We don't have the fear that Isaiah had when he was in the presence of God. It is gone from so many of us. Where is the fear? Isaiah said, I will go to die because I saw God. I saw God, I will go to die because I'm a sinner. I saw in this day, the people say, I saw the angels. I saw an angel, and nothing happened. In the Bible ways, when someone saw the angel, they fell. But it becomes so familiar to us. And say, I saw the angels. What changed in our lives after that? The passion increased. The first love came back. The fear was there. We lost our evangelistic zeal. Well done, John, because we stand to share your faith with someone. God didn't prepare anyone to be evangelist. But when the passion comes, we become one. When you have passion for Jesus, when you understand the importance of the gospel in someone's life, we will share our faith. We will preach the gospel for everyone without any fear. The problem is there is not passion. Therefore, no evangelism. We lost our evangelistic zeal, and we see the world as our enemy instead of our mission field. This calls us to become more concerned with the comfort of the saints than with the salvation of the lost. Can you see it? Can you observe it? Sometimes, you are concerned more about our comfort than we saw with the, 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 the lost that are there. Cry for something that they don't know. 
but we know the solution for this world. We know the hope. We know the salvation. We know the way. But you are not sure. Because you are so comfortable. You are in the comfortable zone. We become insensitive to the Holy Spirit. And allow sins into our lives. And it affected our relationships. With God and with one another. When you are passionately in love with Jesus, we become sensitive to grieving his spirit. But when you become cold, you will lose that sensitivity and gossip, pride, jealousies, bitterness, selfishness take place in our lives, and it displeases God. Can you find yourself in anything of that? When you lose our first love, we become content with what we are instead of bring, being bring, uh, driven to become more like Jesus. It's fine. I'm okay. I'm a good Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I have lots of friends there. We, have, we enjoy the time. The world is so good. The worship is amazing. The coffee after that is so good. We become content with the way that you live. But you need to desire to be more like Jesus instead. Instead of comparing ourselves to Jesus, we begin to compare ourselves against one another. And from there, we allow other things to sit on the throne of our lives. And relegate really Christ to a lesser place of importance. We still serve Jesus as a Lord, but in our hearts, other things reign. It may be success, it may be power, pride, prestige, or pleasure. What is taking place in, in our lives, in the throne of our lives? Who is in the command? Is Jesus? or success, power, recognitions, what you are looking for. We begin, when you lose our first love and passion for Jesus, we begin to love something or someone more than we love Christ. What kind of relationship do you think, Stephen, the first martyr, for the faith had. For sure, it was deep love. To die for Jesus, we need to love him over ourselves. Are we willing to suffer for Christ to the point of die for him? Are you ready? I tell you, persecution will come soon. Are you ready to die for Jesus? We need to. But for that, we need to pay more attention to the word of God and apply it in our daily life and be more passionate for Jesus and come back to our first love. Jesus wants is for us to love him like he loves us. He demonstrated that love for us on the cross, that love for us on the cross. Jesus suffered and died for us to bring us into relationship with the Father. Jesus has never lost his passion for us. His love for us burning white hot. His desire to be in relationship with us is as strong today as it was when he made us. It is a passionate today as it was when he hugs there on the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Jesus loves us, loves us, and he wants us to return the love. We, the church, are his bride. We loves us, he loves us like a husband loves the wife of you. 
I remember when I, I engaged with Eva. We got engaged. Every day I was there. Every night I was there. All the time I want to be close to her. He worked in the church. I visited the church. She, she, sorry, she worked in the church as a secretary and missionary there. Every day I was there. The passion of youth. The same passion that Jesus has for us. Today, Jesus is saying, remember from where you have fallen. Return to your first love, to your first deeds, and the life to which you were called in Christ. Return, come back. Jesus is saying, come back to your first love. Come back to me. Come close to me. Desire me more. Spend more time with me. Read more your Bible. Pray more. Ask him for more. As in John 15 says, if you remain in him and he him in us, we can ask whatever you want. We need, we need more. Today, Jesus is saying, remember, remember where you fall, where, when you fall, fell, and come back. Brothers and sisters, we need to work our Christian lives with deep passion for Jesus and moved by the power of the Lord. The church of Ephesus died, and the city died around it, because the church is the light. Where is not light, darkness take over. The church died, and the city as well. He who has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. And what the Spirit says to us today. Be light. Be the light of the world. Be the salt. The salt. Be light. I remember a testimony that a group of young people went to a place like a mash farm or any other place that has lots of social problems. And they started to pray and worship God every, every Friday. And uh, the atmosphere on that place changed because the light were there, was there. And what happened? After a long time, they didn't see any results. No one from the community come to enjoy them, and they give up. And uh, one month later, one of that young people went to that place and went to a small shop. And the guy said, why did you stop? When you were here, violence stopped. We had peace during that time. But in the day that we stopped, the violence came back. And you are living a very difficult time. You are concerned about it, what can happen in time here in our shop. A church is made up of individuals. The passion of the church will never be any greater than the collective passion of her members. If you are in fire for Christ, that passion will be reflected in our church. If you grow go cold in our love for Jesus, that gold, coldness will be evident in our fellowship. It's very serious. This is everything starts with us, individual. If I start to pray, if I start to give myself to Jesus, 
if I become passionate for Jesus and spend more time in prayer in my house, come to the prayer meetings and be more involved in the church, be more passionate for Jesus, for his kingdom, for sure, it will go to contaminate the church, bring fire to the church, because my life, what I'm going to speak, what I'm going to say, what I'm going to live, will affect my brothers and sisters. And suddenly, everyone starts to pray more, to come together, and to desire to be here in the church on Sundays to worship him. Something changes. In the moment that I stand by myself to put Jesus first in my life. I believe Jesus is saying to each one of us today what he said to the church of Ephesus. He is asking you to remember where you once were. He is counseling us to come back to the passion we once had for him. Let's go back to that moment when we first met Jesus. Do you remember? The first time. The first moment that you had the amazing experience with Jesus, when you invited him, do you remember? Remember the love we felt, the adoration we had for our Savior. Remember the love you felt, the adoration we had for our Savior. Do you remember how grateful you were for the forgiveness of sins? Do you remember how at the moment nothing else mattered, only Jesus? Everything was about him, as you sing today. Do you remember? Today, God wants us to go back and remember that moment in time and having that in our memory, he wants us to return. He wants us to come back to our first love, to the place that he is the first and the last. Let's ask today for more fire in our hearts, for more passion, for more love, for more desire. I want to give you a moment to ask Jesus for more fire. Close your eyes and ask Jesus, please. More, more Jesus. Is there a passion in my heart for you, Jesus? Help me to love you more, to put you first. It's all about you, Jesus, it's not, it's not about me. It's about you, Jesus. I desire you. I want to fire in my heart for you. Father, come. Have your way. Change us. Bring us back to our first life, love. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Please help us. Help us to be the people that you called us to be. Help us to be aware about the situation of the world. Give us passion for the lost. Give us passion for you, Jesus. We need you. Brothers and sisters, Jesus wants to start a new season in our life. He wants to bring us back for our first love. He wants us to be passionate for him, for his kingdom. And he wants us to make him too big, too enough. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You may feel like, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's quite a... 
But what I see, God is preparing a people for great things. We need to be prepared. We need to be reminded of the things that we need to come back, the place that we need to come back. We need to realign our heart with the heart of our Father. So we'll be able to respond when God is moving. We'll be able to say yes. When persecution comes, we'll keep saying yes to Jesus. We'll not deny. We'll not run away. We'll not be scared of what is happening because we are prepared. We are ready. And don't take it like, oh, my gosh. You know, don't take it as God is training you. God is training us for something great. Amen. And that my prayer is that our hearts will be really willing. Our hearts will say, Jesus, I want more. Because we know there is more for us. I want to grow in you. I want to grow in my relationship with you. I want more of your Holy Spirit. I want more of your power to be able to respond for for my, my, my generation, for the moment that we are living. God is count on you and me. We are the soldiers, and we need to respond trained, ready, and prepared for what the king you say to us, go and do. Amen. God bless us as church, as NCF. I pray that this church, you'll be a light on the hill. I pray that you and me, you'll be the evangelist. I pray that you and me, you'll be those who are healing the sick. You and me are delivering the, those who are oppressed by the devil. You and me, you'll be the voice of hope for those who do not have hope. Amen. God bless us. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that we need to come back. We need to come back. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And just to remind you, as we are, we are more off, like cell groups are not... Some of cell group are canceled this, the rest of the month. Invite someone else to come to your house. Come out from your comfortable place. Or maybe if you, you don't have a house, maybe you live with someone else. Let's get together for coffee. Or maybe if you know someone else who do not have a, live with someone else, they cannot invite you to your house. Invite them to your house. You know, let's invite one another. Let's spend time in fellowship, in strengthening, you know, and having good time together. This is it's good season for us. You know, invite your friend, invite your brother or sister. Or maybe someone else that is not a Christian. Invite them as well. Have some fellowship and the grasp the opportunity to share about the love of the Father. Amen. God bless you. Have a lovely day. There is coffee and tea. And have a blessed and a fruitful week. Thank you. Amen.